in this episode of Highlight Sundays, the past and the future of technology. Hello and welcome back to Highlight Sundays. It is the sixth week of 2013, and here are your highlights. Our first article today comes from Gizmodo, and it's entitled, Scientists have made the first truly 3D microchip. Now, as you are probably quite aware, many microchips today are basically a printed circuit board. Data can be transferred front and back, left and right across the chip. But most of the time, everything is sort of contained within this 2D plane. Apparently, this recent development by the University of Cambridge has actually allowed for the creation of microchips that can also transfer data up and down. Now, this is a particularly significant breakthrough because right now, as you know, processor technology, especially in terms of clock speed, have actually come to a point of stagnation, which of course explains why nowadays you see more and more cores on a processor instead of you know actual numerical increases with regard to the actual clock speed. So hopefully this technology might be a means to actually solve this problem and break through this barrier. According to the article, this is not really ready for any real world applications just yet, but hopefully in time, this would actually become something significant. So we've looked into the future, let us now look into the past. We're gonna do so with yet another article from Gizmodo, and this one is entitled, The Sounds Your Dial-Up Modem Used to Make, Visualized. Now, we always knew that series of funny noises was actually, you know, your modem communicating with a server somewhere. If you actually looked into the technical terminology, you'll even know that it's actually a process called handshaking. But the question is, what exactly are these two modems trying to tell each other? This is exactly what this article tries to cover. So what this article has is, well, a recording of this handshaking session and the creator of this page actually took the audio file, turned it into a spectrograph, I believe that's what they call it, and actually analyzed all the sounds that are going on. So I can't really describe much of it, so I do encourage you to actually take a look. It's very interesting to see how these two devices are actually communicating with each other. So yeah, check it out. Link in the video description. Now, as you know, I have reported on multiple occasions the hacking of Twitter accounts. Well, you'll be happy to hear that Twitter isn't just sitting there and letting it happen. According to this article from Ars Technica, Twitter is trying to do something. We're looking at an article entitled, Twitter looks to add two-factor authentication to stop password hacks. Basically, according to this article, Twitter has actually released a recruitment call. They're looking for software engineers specialized in security and they intend to set up something to protect your login information. Now, two-factor authentication isn't anything new. As far as I'm aware, at least Google has been using it for the longest time, and I'm sure there are other services out there where this is an option. How Google implements this is that your phone number is actually given to Google as well. When you log in, or when you try to do something like change your password, you may receive a message from Google, and that message will carry an authentication code that you will have to key in. So this is just an additional layer of security to prevent unauthorized access. I'm happy to see Twitter is doing something along these lines to protect the accounts. And hopefully we will hear less of compromised accounts this year. Our last article for today comes from Lifehacker. This should be particularly interesting to you if you like photography. In fact, this links you to a webpage that teaches you how to improve step one of taking pictures which is the very essential step of seeing your subject and actually framing the image in your mind. Entitled, Train Your Eye to Take Better Photos by Analyzing Your Reaction to Others, the article encourages you to actually frame your images in an intriguing way. Notice how your attention is drawn to a particular subject. If you can capture the essence of that, that is the part that draws your attention, that is how you get a good photo. Now the Lifehacker article actually links to the original source article so I encourage you to check that out as well. The source article, which comes from lightism.co.uk, actually lists a bunch of steps from 1 to 10, things that you should pay attention to. The Lifehacker article actually summarizes this, and I believe the Lifehacker authors also added a little bit of their own insights. So yeah, definitely check out the Lifehacker article. 
When you're done with that, scroll down to the bottom and click on the source link. Very useful tips whether you are new or experienced in photography. And that's it, that wraps it up for the 4 articles today. Vlog segment, yes, I have things to say. First of all, I hope you enjoyed my Understanding 3D series. I had a lot of fun doing it, especially the second episode. Hopefully you guys can learn something from it. And if you guys actually attempt any of the 3D stuff, I will be very interested to see how the results turn out. Second, this week marks a very important holiday, at least for people with my cultural background. Because the Lunar New Year is right around the corner, I will be spending these couple of days engaged in celebrations, seeing as that this is the only festive that I actually participate in, and that's why there will be no Wednesday video. I'm sorry about that, from next week we will carry on with our usual schedule. I might actually bring back Concept Camera because I have some new ideas. Well that wraps it up for this episode of Highlight Sundays. If you have any comments, queries or suggestions, or if you have anything to share for the next episode of Highlight Sundays, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below. As always, I appreciate every like, favorite, and subscription you give me. Also, don't forget to check out the official Twitter for this channel at twitter.com slash 0612TV. A happy Lunar New Year to all of you. You're watching 0612TV.